Good morning. Let's see what we're going to listen to today. I honestly need to just like pool together all of these suggestions because I'm starting to lose track. What a blessing that is. Seriously. Like, <laughs> I mean, obviously I'm not viral <laughs> or anything like that, but it's just the fact that I have enough subscribers that are making suggestions that are that just to check out some cool stuff. So I feel like I own uh, Kim Eklund, a heavy track. He's also suggested one a, a while ago. And I'm thinking, you know what? We should probably listen to a heavy one. So let's see. So one of them that he suggested is Melancholy by Shadow of Intent. So let's go ahead and listen to that one. Melancholy sounds like it's gonna be sad, but I have a feeling it's probably gonna be more heavy than anything else. So Shadow of Intent, Shadow of Intent. So uh, let's let's see Malediction, the music video. Usually, not always, but they're usually the best representation of a band. So let's give that a listen. Reverb. Ooh, triplet. Ooh, some strings. Hey, that's the title of the song. That's cool. Nice. Nice. I like his highs better than his lows. Yeah, his highs, his highs are stronger than his lows to me. That's cool. No, I wasn't expecting that. I'm not... <laughs> I like and I don't like his logo vocals. There's something about them that I don't like. They, they just kind of feel a little bit weak, but he can still hit it. Like, he can still hit that range in his own comfort zone. I don't know. structure of the song. Good screamer.
got that epic vibe going, and I, I'm, I'm convinced of it. I like it. It doesn't feel cheesy. Neat. That was neat. Good suggestion. Now, I need to double check. I thought he said in the beginning, I thought he said, Malediction! And like, but he might have said, I emerge alive! And I didn't understand that. I didn't... Yeah. Okay, he did say it. Yeah, he did say it. Because I was reading the lyrics and I was like, oh, the first line isn't Malediction. But it is. They just didn't... It's just not listed. I'm not sure of the definition of Malediction. Now, I think I understood the lyrics pretty well, but... Oh, okay, cool. Malediction is a curse. Imprecation. The utterance of a curse. That actually defines the song pretty well. The song is about being cursed, but not in a, like, a witchery way, but in a, uh, a kind of a sad boy way. But I liked it. I thought it was, uh, it was well, it was well said. I don't know if the song was written in the self-narrative. I don't know if he's speaking for himself or he's speaking as a character. This could be the uh, the thoughts of Dracula. It doesn't it doesn't point it out. So if it's told from the perspective of some sort of ancient deity, he's unable to die and he's so sad. He's just withering away in his own immortality and hates that he can't glean anything from his suffering. He doesn't really say that he wants to die, but he's just like this. It's it's all a waste a most horrid fate, ghastly rotting grave. I don't know if he's saying it from the perspective of, you know, some sort of ancient deity. I think he might actually be saying it from the perspective of himself, as well as a little bit of a collective where he says, like, bloodshed and malice conjured the source of our decay. He asks some, some tough questions when you're, when you have no hope, when you feel a bit nihilistic. And he says, am I, am I to roam forever gone, to roam forever gone? Festering memories of the past start to project, then wither away, inducing sanity. On, and so he, he's forgetting where he even came from. As far as like how he got there, I don't know. But he's just in a place of emptiness. Uh, there's one line that really struck me that I thought was really cool. Let me find it. Yeah, he says, we were led to believe the netherworld is of myth, but it dwells within and its nature so abstract, yet so very real. That is a really cool line. Because <laughs> he's right. Uh, the netherworld is within. And hell is within. We can manifest hell through our own actions. We can live in a state of hell here on earth unto permanence, you know, if we don't get ourselves out of it. There are some really, really cool testimonies of people experiencing the other, the underworld or having dreams of the underworld. And some of them, I think, might be just a dream. But others match uh, this kind of description of emptiness. One guy that I've seen describing the underworld was there's no violence, at least where he was in the section of the underworld that he was, there was no violence, but there was just emptiness. It was void in the sense that there was no activity. Like he was walking through like a, an alley and there was no lights and there's just people standing still and he couldn't, he was looking at people's eyes and there was just nothing there. Like everyone was alive, but they may as well have been dead because they were just, there's just nothing there. There was a part where he was like saying that he, even he himself couldn't feel anything. Like it's like his heart wanted to escape. Like he wanted to escape from his, his own reality of the situation of what he was experiencing. But he had no willpower to resist against emptiness, the void that was within him. He ha he couldn't push against it. He was just stuck in this prison of emotionlessness. Like he was, he wasn't able to feel anything. And it, it was almost like he was just overcome with fear and dread. And there was no other space within his own spirit for any sort of light. Like he was just, it's just pure darkness. And that's it. It reminds me of that. You know, when I, when I see this is that like the we're led to believe the netherworld is of myth, but it dwells within its nature. So abstract, yet so very real. Its nature is very abstract, and yet it is very real. And I myself have seen some things that validate this concept that there's a parallel universe that coincides with ours that operates in a different frequency. That's where our spirits operate, and that's where spiritual warfare is waged, where sp certain spirits go to the underworld and others go to the path towards heaven. And the na straight and narrow path is heaven, and the wide and wide and open path is the one to hell. 
uh, it was very uh, thought-provoking, which I think is that's the sign of a well-written song. It doesn't rhyme much, but it didn't. It wasn't the style of song that needed to. It, it was more poetry than anything else. So yeah, I like the lyrics. I think the lyrics are good. Now, as far as the mix is concerned, I definitely think the bass end could have been crunchy, um, but there was no crunchiness. Now, the bass end hit. It hit right. So I'm not really complaining about anything. I'm just saying that the tone was just too soft for me. I, I would have li- I would have appreciated the, the bass to be more standout. But uh, the guitars hit really well. The bass end still hit really good. The drums were massive. And the vocals were nice and prominent and upfront. I think the mix was just great. Even the even the strings were at the proper levels that they should be in order to in order for everything to feel right. When the strings are too loud, it can change the presentation of the song into a more cheesy, less convincing vibe. They're going for a really really dark depiction of their own song, and I think they nailed it. Um, but my only gripe is his his low end vocals, where some of those like gorilla style vocals that are like ooh. You know, I thought those were cool, but sometimes it kind of loses its power when you're down to this lower register. Down there, it's like, I can't get much power behind it. You know, it's at least me personally, and, and I can even hear it. It's mixed correctly, so it's at least hitting correct, but I'm not convinced of its power. Usually when I, li- when I do lows, I like the lows with a lot of chest behind them where they're like... <gasps> Like more like that, like that lower. I emerge alive. Like that low end with a lot of power with chest behind it works better for me, and it's still hitting a really low range. But I felt like his lower range was more like. Like I don't know, it's just different in a way that didn't feel big and massive and powerful as I felt it should be. But his mid-range and his high range, like his... uh, Like that kind of... All that stuff was just so cool. He nailed it. You know, I felt like he nailed all that stuff. It was extremely convincing. Props to the vocalist. You know, I I don't think he's a bad vocalist. I just think that his his lows uh, could have been a little bit more beefy in their delivery. That could just be his own voice that he's just working with. And maybe that's that's the extent of what he's able to work with. Or maybe he just prefers that kind of tone. I've definitely met some vocalists that prefer a certain style. You know, they, they really like just this kind of vocal, you know, and and I'm the kind of guy that prefers a different kind. I definitely have a, a wide range of preferences. But when it comes to this kind of stuff, if you're going to hit a low, I want some I want to hear as much chest behind it as I can. So like some really good lows for me are like bands like Traders. Like it's it's unreal when I hear his vo- his his low vocals I'm like oh ho, 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 that is uh that is awesome if it could hit like that you know the lower end of his vocals would have been more satisfying but this is a this is a very nitpicky thing you know but I'm a nitpicker I I pick those nits out of every single song that I find so that's just how I am G- good suggestion Maladiction Shadow of Intent from the album Melancholy it came out this year so summer of this year it came out So yeah, cool, cool song, boys. All right, next one.